Well, welcome to part one of the walking tour around Midwest Rails Railroad. And uh, the technical name of the railroad is Midwest Regional Rail. It's been around for a few years. It's not particularly fancy, but it doesn't have to be. One of the big things I do on this railroad is I like to convert a lot of old stuff or natural and natural materials into scenery and so forth. That does a couple of things. It saves some money, still gets a good effect, and sometimes saves some materials that would uh, wind up in the trash can from going in the trash can and just not being used. Starting here in St. Joe, what you can see here, the church up there is an old model power kit. A lot of railroaders will see that one new coming out. It's been weathered a little bit. It's getting a little bit yellow, but that's okay. White paint yellows in the real world, too, and that's all right. The trees around it are a mixture of natural materials, some semi-scratch built material. The tall one is actually a butterfly bush flower that's been dried, sprayed with an adhesive, uh, read that as hairspray, and rolled in the uh, some very loose ground foam. Very cheap tree, does the job very quickly. I've used quite a few of those. You'll see several different ones like that around the layout, especially when we get around to the Colorado Spur. The houses behind the church, uh, there's one right there. That one right there is a Rick's kit. Uh, the one behind that, which I'll shift the camera so you can see, is kind of the bank. It's about the residential area I show. That's one of the uh, uh, one of the Europe European productions. I'll be honest, I've forgotten which one, but it's not bad. <coughs> The building in the back is a rescue from an old layout, along with the entire back street, which we'll switch around to in a few minutes, and I'll tell you about it. Electronics that you see going right there, the uh, crossing gate is a uh, Walther's, uh, Walther's signal with uh, that's being driven by a logic rail technology s signal board. Not the cheapest parts in the world, but I was after a quality effect there, so I didn't, I didn't want to skimp on that. I'll skimp on a lot of things, that wasn't one of them in this case. The uh, signal light right here is also a Walther's package. That's got a Walther's timer controller and the uh, Walther's uh, scenery detail as well, being the signal platform. Uh, yeah, I do need to work on a couple things there. Anybody that's a discriminating model is going to look at this little spot and laugh. That well, that's go ahead, laugh. I'll fix it later. <laughs> this was here long before this was, and I'll go back and change that to make it look neat down the road. I just haven't had time yet, or made time. A little bit further on here, the uh, diner there. Of course, that's a Walther's kit that everybody's seen. I've put a lot of lights in the thing. Uh, it's actually got enough detail in there. I'm not going to try to show it on here, but it's got enough detail you can actually read the menu that's up on the back wall. It's kind of cool. But you see a lot of these cars around here. Most of these cars are from a, a run that uh, was done. The company made them and sold them cheap and these 56 210s that you see, these Chevy 210s that you see, you'll see those all over the layout. The Corvettes, the 210s, um, the black, the black and the blue Ford pickups from about the same era. Those were all going for two dollars and fifty cents in the hobby shops and Walmart. So you find a cheap a deal like that, and you like to be on a budget, you pounce all over it, and you go from there. So those are all over the place. I'm going to shift the camera now, so I'm parting the bounce. Doink. Come over here. Now, this, some of you will recognize this is where I shot the big boy video. A uh, <clears throat> little different angle so you can see everything. The back street there, that came off of another of a man's layout that I, I don't know if he retired, died, went to a nursing home, no idea. Uh, a relative of his was selling off all the buildings from his layout at one of the hobby shows last spring. And that entire back street with the figures and the little bit of lighting that's in it, which you can't really see at this angle, but it's there, was a whopping, I think, 50 bucks total. And if you look at that, most DPM, you buy DPM kits for eight, nine, twelve dollars a piece for small ones and more on up the line. That street count the figures probably cost the original owner somewhere in the neighborhood of 100, 150 bucks. <coughs> and <laughs> I'll save money where I can save money, and there you go, right there. Obviously, still some work need to be done back here. The telephone poles are still sitting on their little toy-looking platforms, so they're not real great yet. But um, that'll, that'll go away in time. My roads are always something in process. One little detail I'll show you right here. See the mud with the tracks in it? Just right in here. Notice that doesn't get messed up when I hit it. Let's talk cheap scenery here. This started out as river sand. I live just south of the Missouri River, 
which has gotten a lot less polluted over the last few years, so I didn't feel bad about using this material. Went up, got a whole bucket of it, brought it back. It's very fine grain. Uh, you can shape it, let it dry out, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. I made tracks in it with a model here and then soaked it with glue from the edges until it was all soaked through and let it dry. It has not shifted. It's been that way in that particular spot right there with those mud tracks in it for almost two years now and hasn't even lost a grain, I don't think. So I got attacked by spiders in here, so you may see some webs occasionally. That's just looking back down kind of the front street that I've got set up for uh, St. Joe. Works out pretty decently. Moving the camera again just real quick. This little front section here and then we'll move on to the next section of the layout. This building right here, toy grade Tyco kit, life light kit, something like that. I don't even remember, but anybody that's got it or seen it, you'll know it. It's not very high detail, but if you do, if you repaint the kit with some inexpensive, off-the-shelf Walmart primer colors, that's a dark gray primer on the front, the uh, and red primer in the brickwork. I haven't even done a brick wash on that thing, although I probably should to help bring out some more detail. The kit was like a buck out of a garage sale. Another place you go look for stuff, and the paint, the cans of paint are 97 cents a piece. <laughs> Let's talk save some money. Be cheap. Why not? This is a DPM kit right here. That was a new one. I got that a few years ago when DPM uh, was getting going and it lay idle for quite some time until I finally got it finished. Speedy Andrews signs off of a Walther's kit, just added it to it. Very simple. Just washed, spray painted, shot with gray spray paint and then dry wash, or uh, washed with uh, light sand, float quill, not float quill, uh, the water based material. Worked out pretty good. And the last building there is uh, the red and blue is a rescue. I think I paid a couple of dollars for it but another drain show. So that's some more details to go on to it yet to make it really right. But that's the way it is. And the big one in the middle, good old Walther's Green Elevator. Needs to have the uh, Quaker logo put on it on this side. I just haven't done it yet. It'll get it eventually. In a nutshell, that is the St. Joe part of Midwest Regional Rail. We'll move on to the next layout.